नमस्ते वेलकम टू द फ्रेश एपिसोड ऑफ सोल टॉक आई एम अभिलाषा योर होस्ट सो टुडे वी हैव वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पर्सनैलिटी ऑन आवर शो हर नेम इज वैदेही वैद्या शी इज फुटबॉलर बाय पैशन शी इज बिजनेस वुमेन फ्रॉम हर प्रोफेशन शी इज अ टेड एक्स स्पीकर एज वेल सो वॉट इज वेरी यूनिक अबाउट हर तो शी इज द फर्स्ट इंडियन वुमेन हु हैज कम्प्लीटेड football industries mba from liverpool industries uk the second important thing about her she has started a very unique organization called women in sports india so what this organization does so her organization actually helps people from all the sports area like you know indian sports women specifically and then indian sports professionals as well so she is bringing like you know sports people like sports persons as well as sports professional on the same platform so we would like to understand from her like you know what is her story and what is other you know inspiration why she has started this organization so today from vaidehi we are going to understand her story more in detail so let's welcome vaidehi vaidya Welcome to the Soul Talk Vedi. I'm glad that you have accepted our invitation to be here and share your experience and share your journey with us. I always love to speak about sports, so thank you so much for inviting me. I am glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So we would like to understand from you first like you know when exactly like you started playing football what was the inspiration to play football why exactly you felt like you know you should play football because most of the women in india they don't go for football okay they they can play tennis they can play badminton even the uh, you know women in india all girls in india they are playing cricket as well but most of the time there are very few uh, i'll say indian girls or indian women who are playing football and that is also so passionately in and as the career so how did you start uh i have always been an athlete uh since my childhood i played taekwondo for almost 7 7 plus years and i have tried badminton i have tried cricket i have tried swimming um and as i transitioned from one sport to the other i eventually found football if if i can say that i started my engineering you know as every other indian has <laughs> in india everybody who goes through the same process i i am no exception i started with my engineering and when i was actually learning or educating myself in in of course during engineering i found that our college has a football team for for boys right and i was fascinated because before that i had never played football i didn't even know how it was played and one fine day i just saw them playing behind uh, our college building there's a huge ground and i saw them playing there and i just got fascinated by that sport and i asked them if i can play with them and they were like yes yes come come play with us and i started playing a little bit maybe you know and as i started playing i realized that oh this is a fantastic sport and i just fell in love with that sport and as i started playing every day day by day i realized that okay i want to do my career in this sports i want to do something in football because i am simply in love with that sport so as my graduation grew closer i started thinking about okay yes i want to do something in football but what exactly should that be right and then i realized that being a professional athlete wasn't so much of an option at that point of time because of course football as a whole wasn't that great in india now you can see isl now you see id now you see sunil chetri bala devi making their mark in in football but at that point of time there was just one football club in pune i see now there are 24 plus clubs for girls particularly in pune but for me i had no choice but to pursue a career in football that was other than being a player right so i started searching for relevant courses um at that point of time i came across a course called uh, fimba football industries mba 
uh, which is uh, hosted by University of Liverpool. And I just, you know, I was, I decided, yes, this is something that I want to do. Uh, and I then applied for it. But they came back to me and said, you need two years of full-time experience to apply for this course. So I took those two years. I worked in the field of engineering and I then applied again. And then I was admitted as the first Indian woman to do that course. And I was thrilled to go there. And that is where my football journey started. After that, of course, I worked in football development, particularly um, for almost five, six years. And I got that opportunity also through my course, Fimba. And uh, I was the first Indian woman to do an internship with UFA, um, which is the European governing body for football, uh, which was a fantastic experience. I developed a report, which was the first of its kind report on women's football potential in India. Uh, and I, the experience that I got when I was actually going through the process of developing that report is just amazing. And it changed my life. It changed the way I look at women's sports particularly, not just football. And it changed the way I look at myself as a woman as well. Because this report took me to places where I never thought I would go. Uh, it took me the remote part of India where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a city girl through and through. I've, you know, I've been brought up in Pune. And um, there are things that, you know, I could have never understood unless I had gone through the process of actually creating that report. So I did, and I, I found out that it's not an easy life for a, for a girl child. Um, you know, it's not, I mean, even trivial things like what you wear is going to make or break your career in sports when you go to the rural region of India. Languages play a huge part in the growth of women's sports. And, you know, sheer opportunity or lack of it, actually. That is an important reason for women's sports to not grow as much as it should be. It has a lot of potential. But, you know, these apparently small things make a larger impact on women's sports. That's what I realized. And because I've never been through that, that impacted me even more. And that is where actually the whole idea of women in sports started for me. And that is now what I'm doing. So that's my journey in short. But I must say that, you know, being in this field has changed the way I look at life. It has changed the way I do things also, you know, the way I speak with people, the way I conduct myself in, in social uh, atmosphere, the way I do business also, right? So... Yeah, I mean, for my own growth, uh, I would give a lot of credit for to me being in sports, you know. So, yeah, that's that's a little bit about my yeah. journey. <laughs> yeah, it's a great journey. So, little more details I would love to understand, like, you know, uh, about the football. Yes. So, what exactly about the football you like? Like, you know, what kind of things, you know, you feel like a challenging uh, these are the things, you know, that makes you feel like, you know, um, more uh, being a woman or being a girl or being a sports person or being a human being. So what exactly it is in the football, you know, that makes you feel so great about it? So football, as we all know, is a team game. Yes. Right. You you bring 11 people together. You have to coexist. Yes. Whether you like them or not. Yes, you have to learn from them and you have to play well together as a team. Yes, individual talent doesn't matter in, in football, right? You could be the best player in the world. But if you are not gelling up well with your teammates, your team is going to lose, right? So team being a team player is, I think, one of the most important things that I learned. You know, I had a lot of players whose personality did, did not match mine. You know, they were not like me. They were very different. Some of them were exactly like me, right? So having these different personalities jammed in a team together is going to make you very adaptable to life. 
and that has reflected in my life in a way that you know you threw me anywhere in the world i'll be able to survive because i know how to accommodate other people i know how to work well with other people and in a way that has reflected in my uh, you know organization as well as i started my business you know as I, as i registered women as potentia as i started working with other women you know having that experience of working with 11 other people who have very different personalities had has taught me to change my communication style according to every other person and because one person isn't like others i have to you know change the way i speak with you for example yes or way i would speak with any of my other colleagues so that is number one that is a very important thing that i have you know personally experienced and i have adapted in my own life the second thing is failures because it's a team game and you will score or you won't score and that is going to determine whether you fail or win yes right and i have failed many times there have been many occasions where i haven't been able to score for my team or i have conceded goals for my team right and that i realized that after every match it's not the end you fail or you win either of the choices it's not going to be the end even if you win it's not it is doesn't mean that you have won the world even if you fail it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world yes right so i think that is again it it you may not realize it now as you're playing or i did not realize it when i was playing but it was ultimately impacting my life so even if i face any failure or reject, uh, rejections now which you will if you want to do if you want to do anything in sports be prepared if there are a lot of rejections so um you know simply knowing that the rejections or the failures are not the end has you know prepared me for what's what's next and actually that leads to your success also right success ultimately i read it somewhere it's not my original quote but i i i read it somewhere success is 99 rejections or 99 no's and one yes right so it prepared me to endure those 99 no's and uh, it also prepared me for that one yes uh, so yeah i mean i think those two life lessons i got from football other than it being a fantastic uh, exercise for your body because i was um, you know i was a winger so you play on wings and you have to run the most so you go up and down up and down up and down the field and it was a fantastic exercise for my body i i remember being on a field 2 hours every day and when i didn't have anything i felt like oh i'm going to go mad because i was so used to being on the field on open field and running up and down the field always with my teammates so absolutely like football has taught me a lot uh, not to mention it took me towards a very fantastic career also um so yeah i mean um i would give football a lot of credit uh, for me being where i am today yeah so the two takeaways for us like you know it helps being a team member and the second is like you know you accept the failures wholeheartedly absolutely yeah you don't keep on crying like you know when you get the failures i think this is very important right like even when you are working in corporates or when you are working even in the just in the shop or mall you are working with the people and you are going to have difference of opinion with the people you are going to have a uh, failures as well so you know accepting them and then you know uh, facing them is a very important thing so uh, you know sports is playing very important role here so we should always play the sports i agree and i think uh many of us don't understand this but whatever you learn through sports yes whether it is f- physical or mental these are all transferable skills right yes so they are not just limited to sports field if you start working in any other field tomorrow you are going to need those skill sets uh, like like i said you know being a team player whether you work in corporate or you know government job or any other 
startup, for example, it's not going to matter. You're still going to need to be a team me- member, yes. right? Yes. So yeah, I mean they're transferable and uh, it they are long lasting also. So you don't forget them. They are like motor skills. You yes. learn it when you are young, but they they are there till you uh, till the end of time. I would say. Yeah. So these two words are actually important. They're transferable and long lasting skills. Absolutely. Okay, so now uh, you have started career like you know out of the football game, and the, you did your MBA in football industries, right? That's right. Yes. So what was exactly like you know or how it is different or you know this MBA from other MBAs? So football as an industry or any sport as an industry works a little bit different. So I'll give you a very small example. Of course, I learned a lot of things, but one of the things that uh, I remember very vividly is in any other MBA or in any other field, mm-hmm. your assets are dead assets. So they are not alive. But in okay. football, you have live assets. So players, mm-hmm. let's say for example, a club has 23 player squad, right? They are assets, but they are live assets. So they are human beings as assets. And so this is a very small difference or, you know, very small thing that we think is not going to affect much. But it does because everything is surrounded um, by all these live assets, right? So everything you do in sports, especially football, it is about these live assets. Everything, you know, is concentrated towards those live assets because players are the key. If you don't have players... You don't have anything else. So that is one of the biggest um, thing that I realized that it doesn't work like other industries. Marketing is very, very different because sports is very much attached to emotions. We see it every day. Whenever there is a India-Pakistan cricket <laughs> match, you know, we have people glued to the TV or now OTT platforms, right? And our emotionals are involved. So everything you do, any kind of marketing you do, any kind of business plan you have to develop, it has to take into consideration the emotions of people, right? Certainly. Emotions of fans. How do you create that community? You need support. So how do you make sure that you have fan following, right? So all these things are not relevant to many of the other businesses. And unless you learn specifically um, in the specialized sector, it becomes very hard to understand how these all things work in together, you know, finance, working with law, working with marketing, working with being a leader in sports, right? So all these things have to be cl- clubbed together to understand how the entire sport ecosystem works. And that is what I learned when I went to University of Liverpool. I, um, and of course, I mean, there are, there are, there are of course, uh, MBA subjects. Um, you know, economics and strategy, uh, which are common for all uh, management sectors. But, you know, there are these different subjects which you have to understand um, and they don't work like uh, other industries as well. So fantastic experience and talking to the leaders of the industry. So we had CEOs uh, come up and speak with us of different football clubs and being in UK, being in like the mother of football, it was a very surreal experience. I could not believe it uh, that, you know, the CEOs of these football clubs were coming and speaking with us. We got to actually go and watch the matches in the stadium itself and, you know, actually experience the fan engagement. Oh, the fan experience was fantastic. You know, how involved the fans are in their own football club. And it has been for generations, right? So their granddad, their dad, the current generation have all been supporting those football clubs. So it was a very different experience. And I want to see that in India as well, you know, being fan of of a club or a team, which we have started seeing now in in football. At least for the cricket, we have started. Cricket and also football. uh, Slowly and steadily, that is the culture that is developing now. Yes, of course. This is really amazing. Uh, now, uh, coming to your this internship part, 
so you have visited some remote parts of india so which are the remote parts of india you have visited uh so i literally because there was there still isn't enough data available hmm. uh in the f- in, in on sports in general but on women's sports and women's football particularly it wasn't there before and still we are trying to gather all the data but it's not enough oh so i had to actually physically go to different places and interview different people uh that was my data uh because there's no literature there are no reports there is no research document that is available on women's football um so we so i went to northeast side of india i went to manipur i went to assam i went to delhi i went to of course bangalore chennai um i went to um you know rural regions near pune also um i then went to the northern part of course i could not go to kashmir at that time you know i will go now <laughs> yeah now it is open yeah now it is open but i went to imphal um which was a very different experience this was 10 years back then 12 years back uh it was a very different experience than pune maybe or mumbai uh which are metro cities i went to imphal i got out of uh the airport and on the road in front of the airport i saw seven eight artillery heavy vehicles passing in front of me uh jala pan lam palla cha banduka mantu uh long long range uh, guns yes i saw them mounted on on a jeep and i this that was the first time i was seeing any kind of military weapon okay uh, and i mean you know that was a very different kind of uh feeling that i got when i when i saw that i was like no this is not this is not my usual terrain you know this is very different and i remember i was there for two days and i was supposed to meet the national players because at that point of time majority of our women's national team came from manipur and you know all the sir yeah, not eastern seven sisters and even today that's the majority uh so i wanted to meet all the national players and i was there for i mean i was there for two days and i remember uh you know the national players a couple of the national players actually came with me to my room and they said we are going to stay with you for next 10 to 15 days uh 10 to 15 minutes uh and i asked them why you know is there some reason uh and they said so that the people here will know that you know somebody here because it was so unstable at that point of time oh and they wanted to make sure that people won't take advantage of me people won't you know people won't know that you know i know somebody here so sweet of them uh it's sweet but at the same time you know i realized that this is not okay for you know for women particularly if she's she's traveling alone in these regions how unsafe it was and that also led me to think my god these women are just brilliant you know despite the fact that it's not safe for them it was or rather was not safe for them it's changed a lot now you know despite the fact that it wasn't safe for them then they still made the majority of our team is just brilliant for me the kind of the sheer talent the sheer passion that they have for the sport for football it was very inspiring it was it made me do things that i wouldn't otherwise do right and um i was glad to meet a lot of them um and on the first day the first day went to really well night of the first day we got to know that the entire empire is going to be closed tomorrow oh what was the reason it just happened there very often that the entire imphal uh had a curfew and it it you would only know the uh previous night or on the same day morning that no you can't go out now uh and that was a the situation then um you know but you know i just i still admire them you know for the efforts that they take and 
if if you go there the passion for football that you see among those people i was able to actually go for a state level match uh, in one of the same they have two stadiums which we don't even see here in pune they have two football stadiums and i was able to go and watch one of the matches and you the entire stadium was full and i was amazed to see that passion to see you know how involved they were in in football and that wasn't even an international or a national level match that was a state level match and they were just cheering for the team they were supporting they were whistling and you could see the energy in the stadium itself so i mean it's it's a kind of experience that it was a men's football match it wasn't women's football match but they they had uh, it was a men's football match but they had the equal energy for the women's football match as well and then i kind of understood why there are a lot lot of players coming from this region in our national teams because they a they are extremely talented they i don't know if it is a genetic dis- predisposition uh, towards football or is just talent handed from one generation to the other and passion two things i i don't think i have experienced it anywhere else in in the country um so that was one of the experience that i don't think i will ever forget the other one was uh, there is there is a very um small village near guwahati very very small village about maybe about 1000 people 2000 people not more than that and i went to a school um of that village and they had girls and boys so it was a poet poet school uh and boy i saw boys playing outside and i saw girls sitting inside and i just asked the asked a teacher he was a young teacher he wanted to do something um he wanted to bring in jean and i saw i asked him why is this happening you know and the reason he told me shocked me because you know they the girls were not once they hit puberty they were not allowed to wear sports attire and that is why school cancelled all the sports teams a uh, few men miss of girls and of girls which was something that i don't think we would ever experience we have a mirror we can't but i think uh, all the rural parts yeah. of india it is yes. a reality yes and that was the first time that i experienced that or i came across such a situation because i remember being young i was always allowed to wear shorts or sports attire um i was allowed to go out and play i was allowed to pick and choose my sporting activities um my parents never stopped me from doing that but that is not the reality of majority of the india right so um but of course you have to understand that this is 10 years back yes a lot has changed yeah in last decade absolutely and it is it has changed exponentially right it in especially in women's sports a lot of things have changed only in last 5 or 6 years yeah, and there are too many stars now in each type of sport. too many stars too many role models for the young girls to see uh, a lot of uh, girls in rural part of india are aware that they can become an athlete hey okay, so a lot has changed uh, and i'm i'm really happy about that it's a happy surprise for me um and i hope that in the coming decade things would change even more you know yeah. but yeah that was a very different kind of experience and i don't think i would have ever i would have gone through it if it wasn't for that research report you know um yeah i was really happy i did it then that was the experience the that's why you have decided to start this women in sports in india yes that was probably um where it all started uh immediately after i did my um mba i decided uh, or i started working in football development and while i was doing that this was always at the back of my mind oh i need to do something in women's sports i need to do something in women's football and that is where women in sport india started as an online forum so i wanted to connect with other women uh to just connect with them to kind of exp- 
exchange our experiences, to gain knowledge, to gain information, to know what kind of work they are doing and how I can grow. Right? I was seeking guidance as well. That is where Women in Sport India started online. And then slowly and suddenly we realized that there's a lot of potential in women's sports in India particularly. A lot of women and young girls started approaching the forum uh, to seek advice uh, about particularly making career in sports. And I even I started getting, uh, you know, speaking engagement, uh, TEDx being one of them, right? So I kind of realized that, okay, this, this, is, this is something that I want to work in full time. This is my passion. This is, this is where my heart is, really. And, um, you know, then I decided to forget about everything else. <laughs> and I registered with Women in Sport India in 2020 um, to work on it full time, uh, which is what I wanted to do for so long. And I was actually doing it, so I was really happy. And But yes, that research that I did somehow influenced uh, women is uh, establishing women in sport India. Yeah. So you are looking uh, to bring all the uh, sports players, specifically uh, the women sports players, on this forum. At the same time, the people who are working in that particular area, like you know, sports. For example, coaches are there, some physiotherapists are there, or dietitians are there, or nutritionists are there. So you want to bring all these people together. Yes, that is the idea. Um, although I am not, uh, you know, restricting it to women who are part of the ecosystem. Okay. I want to also encourage women who are not part of the ecosystem to come and join uh, the wellness side of it. Okay. Right? So fitness and wellness has to be a bigger cause in yes. India. Because women's health is, you know... If if a woman of the family is healthy, the entire family is healthy. Yeah. That's what I think. So that is true. It is true, right? So we want to make sure that even if you are not working in sports, even if you are not an athlete, but you are interested in sports, maybe to watch sports, maybe to come together and to go for a match or if you want to go for a hike or you want to do yoga, right? Anything... You are part of Vizzy Drive. You are most welcome to join because we want to bring all women together to make sure that they are mentally and physically healthy and to create more opportunity for women to work in sports or to become an athlete and to pursue it professionally as well. So, you know, there's no bar on, you know, who can join Vizzy Tribe. That's the community that we are building now. Um, you are all welcome. To be part of Fizzy Tribe. Whatever your reason is. Whether you are a fan of sport. Or you want to make a career in sport. Uh, or you just want to recreationally be part of it. It doesn't matter. You can come and join Fizzy Tribe. <laughs> okay. So you arrange the events then. Uh, yeah. To this forum. Yes we do. So uh, because Women in Sport India. Or uh, Fizzy Tribe in, in the sense. Uh, started during COVID. Uh, we basically registered and we went into lockdown. Yes. Right. So everything had to be virtual so far. Um, but fortunately, now that uh, danger is subsiding in a way, we want to now transition from virtual to actual physical activities. Um, so we are now launching city-wise chapters. Okay. And uh, through those chapters, then we will, of course, there will be some virtual activities uh, which we'll be doing in order to bring everybody together. Um, so virtual activities will be part of it, but we are now also transitioning to uh, physical activities as well. There will be networking events, there will be uh, activities like coming together and playing, or there could be simple activities like coming together and going for a hike, right? Um, as simple as that. So we are now moving towards more digital model. So physical plus digital model. That's interesting. Yeah. So there won't be any age of no age age limit. You have to be a woman. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. So means like from girl to uh, like uh, grandma, anybody can join. Absolutely. 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 That's something great. You know. Uh, 
means like the whole family uh, can come together yeah a mother daughter we have mother daughters a mother daughter we were gra- uh, grand grand about that three generations or three generations for the community as well yeah absolutely yeah that's fun that's fun it is fun <laughs> it's important to make it fun we want to not um uh, restricted to just you know professional sport sporting activities because sport in its original essence is about having fun together right you go out you enjoy it with your friends and family members that's what it is and we want to bring it back to that that core value um and of course to promote equality as well because a lot of women and young girls are not still allowed to go out and play that's a basic right right so we want to also make sure that we are addressing to that uh, aspect of it as well yeah so you may have to go to the inner circles of india absolutely absolutely that's good now uh, like uh, you have uh, done some programs as well right you know sprinters program was there global leadership programs were there so how those uh, programs are running right now how was the response it was a fantastic response uh, contrary to what i believed uh, i thought in our first program we'll only have maybe four or five women who are interested uh, but we got about 17 18 women uh, on our, on our first program itself and we have now about uh, we are reaching 90 graduates uh, within within maybe two years and uh, we are going to continue with those programs because a lot of women have found uh, you know those programs to be very useful in terms of understanding how the sports field works because it wasn't there before right the kind of guidance that you need to make a career and i i am included in that i had no idea when i started in sports I had no idea what exactly it meant to be part of the sport, sports ecosystem so that with that keeping that in mind that is where we started the mentoring programs and a lot of women some of them have enrolled it twice <laughs> so that would tell you how how useful it was and thanks to all my mentors because of course i am not an expert in all fields right so we have a fantastic team of mentors who uh guide these young girls uh some of them are not so young um but who want to transition into sports you know so they guide these women um they are always approachable you know no matter you know you know where you are in the world or when you want to connect with them they are always approachable they are willing to share their knowledge which is something very refreshing you know a lot of people hold back their knowledge but these mentors are just brilliant uh, in terms of sharing whatever they have learned because that is not easy to gain yeah, sports is a very difficult field to make career in right now Yeah, right. certainly, certainly. Right now, I mean, ten years, fifteen years down the line, it will change. I'm sure. But right now, having those people around you who can guide you and tell you, okay, this is wrong, this is right. You should think about these ten things. I think that that makes a lot of difference. And these 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 fantastic mentors are doing that for for me and my community tribe. Um, and I'm always thankful. for them and to them because they always have inputs uh, in terms of how we can improve the program also which is very important for me right we are not perfect we were not perfect we are always evolving and uh, we are trying to make sure that through these programs we give uh, these women the best knowledge the best advice the best connections and uh, yeah so that's the aim but we are now reaching 90 which is great <laughs> that's really great congratulations for that but this is really interesting uh, you know uh, the concept which uh, you are working in it is very useful as well and it is uh, at the right time and say like you know as you said like you know we can see so many people like you know so many women so many girls are taking up like you know uh, sports as a career or the athlete as a career so that is something i see this is very interesting time for india right now and uh, you have come up with this idea and the people will get a better idea now you know uh, be in this area because you always have this kind of you know a uh, uh, thing like uh, when you are uh, playing some a uh, game or you are athlete after certain period of time like and once you stop playing uh, football or some sports uh, professionally you want to have a secure job in the go or bit okay 
and we have seen so many women or so many girls you know they are coming from the remote areas they don't have that kind of financial backup or they are not from you know a financially well be well to do family so uh, certainly they require it so what kind of opportunities are available or what kind of opportunities can be available for these people like you know apart from go with job absolutely so sports field is expanding very rapidly as the number of athletes grow the jobs surrounding those athletes are also going to grow right so there are certain uh, there are various different aspects on various different verticals that we can look for one absolutely upcoming field is sports science okay uh, so sports science by that i mean sports nutrition uh, physiotherapy exercise physiology um sports psychology uh so strength and conditioning right so th- these come under sports science as field uh sports management is of course an upcoming field operations event management so on and so forth so that is a big field um and a lot of people are also excited about that field so that is another option that you have the third option that you have is broadcasting oh uh, yeah as you know the leagues grow we have so many different leagues pkl ipl <laughs> you know uh isl uh pbl uh now we have also started with kho kho league so you know all these leagues are uh, will keep on coming so where do you broadcast how do you broadcast how do you produce you know how do you make sure that it's reaching a lot of people so all these things are will come under media and broadcasting journalism is another field that you can look at uh digital media so you'll see a lot of um what do you call it? a lot of websites the bridge is a fantastic example of it you know they have done such a great job in terms of covering olympic sports earlier it was you know all, all about cricket but now you know with with the bridge and the work that they are doing so they are they are covering so many different sports and not just olympic sports but they are also covering non conventional sports as well right so digital media is another field that you can look at um commentary you know uh present presenters uh and commentary um what is sports analytics uh is is up and coming field uh it needs a little bit more uh marketing uh or it needs more awareness but it is definitely a field to watch out for so there are so many different fields that people can actually opt for other than being an athlete or being a coach right um and they will in in time in due time they have already started showing financial stability but they will in due time in the ne- next 5 10 years will show you that yes these fields are also financially stable if you want to make a career in it yes go ahead and do it right um so yeah i mean you pick and choose any of these fields and i know that you know sp- sport is going to be a great field it's a quite long list i was not aware of so many you know things right now you have mentioned so really great thing like you know those who are already doing uh, like playing uh, some game or you know or maybe like you know the being athlete they can definitely look out for these areas and you know they can go for some studies as well absolutely, absolutely. so that would be the very nice thing for them uh, now coming to the uh, this thing like you know now you are being inspiration like you know for many uh, women uh, over there like you know who wants to play who wants to be part of the sports industry so from where you draw in- inspiration um so to be honest if you want to do something in sport um you have to be internally motivated you if you depend on external motivations um they are going to run out you know? certainly so you have to and being an athlete actually does that to you right so if you are an athlete you will most of the times be internally motivated you won't need external uh, motivations or stimulants uh, to be motivated and you know i one thing that i have recently realized is half the job is showing up right if you want to be successful if you want to reach at a certain level the best thing that you can do is be consistent with it and i keep on telling uh, this to my friends and family members that you know a sure short formula of being successful 
is consistency. You have to keep on doing it time and again, time and again, time and again. Show up, you know, and trust the process. Of course, smart work is, you know, you have to have calculated risk. But yeah, I mean, keep on doing it. Unless you keep on doing it, unless you're consistent with what you want to do, A, you will never improve, right? Yeah. And because you will never improve, you will never reach there. You will ne never reach your goal, right? You, even though you are failing right now, that is a way for you to reach your goal, right? If you leave it halfway, even if you were going to reach your goal and become successful, you would never know because you yeah. just left it, right? Yeah. So, coming back to your question, you can, I mean, I don't find motivation externally, right? I, I, I internalize it. I keep telling myself, yes, I need to do this and I will reach uh, my goal at any point of time. So, you know, don't, create role models for yourself don't create you don't search for external motivations have them internally i think you are you know yoga so i think yeah. you you understand what i mean by yes, like yes, I internally do. uh being internally motivated i risk being good that yeah uh so that's what i would i would suggest and of course my family members are always there you know to support me and if i'm at any point of time feeling a little down uh, they know that and they, but because they can see from my body language that it's something no bad. Um, and then they try to also support me and tell me, you know, okay, let's try this, let's try that, you know. So that also motivates me. But, you know, I'm not dependent on that. That is an additional advantage that I have from my family members, which is, of course, great. But you won't always get that. Right. So be internally motivated, have confidence in your ideas and your goals. Conviction is very important. Conviction is one of the biggest motivators. If you believe in what you want to do, 100% of the times, you are, you know, you don't need to seek then external motivation. You are already motivated. Yeah, this is beautiful thought. So, and uh, I do believe what you are saying is true. And I think everybody does believe like, you know, you read, like, you know, you read good books, uh, self-help books as well. But until and unless it doesn't come internally, okay, you cannot work on it. It's like, uh, otherwise, it will just say like, you know, you have read this and, you know, uh, you are motivated. But if you are not taking action out of it, then it is to you. So what you are saying is certainly right. And uh, yeah, I believe that. And we all believe that. So, so many, uh, I'll say, lessons we have taken away from you today uh, for myself as well and the people who will be watching this a particular talk as well. Like, you know, first thing I would like to say, like, you know, the, what you said, that uh, what you learn through or what you experience through this course, the skills, they are transferable and the long lasting. So that is very important thing. And the second thing, uh, what you mentioned just now is about the consistency and the conviction like you know what you want to do you go ahead and do it without you know making fuss about the failures yeah. so that's really great thank you for being here thank you so much this was this was absolutely phenomenal interview i mean i kind of got to share a lot of personal things so thank you so much for inviting me to be part of part of soul talk uh, it was really a soul talk, so... Yeah, heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.